Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at a new camera from Mevo. This is called the Mevo Start, and what's unique about what Mevo does with their cameras is that they are fully self-contained streaming devices. All you need is the camera and a smartphone, and you can stream live to most of the major services and record a backup to an SD card. Mevo's been making cameras like this for a while, but this is their newest one that integrates some features of the old camera that were often in separate accessories. So you get everything in one neat little package here. And we're going to be stepping through what this new camera is all about here in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that Mevo sent this to the show free of charge. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing it or approving it before it gets uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this device is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Price point on this one is $299. It is a 1080p device, so it'll stream and record simultaneously at that resolution up to 30 frames per second. It has an 84 degree field of view on the lens, which is not as wide as the prior edition Mevo camera. So when you're all the way zoomed out, things will not look as much of a fisheye on this new edition. Uh, like the old Mevo camera, this one will zoom in and zoom out digitally, and I'll demo those features as we get a little bit further into the review here. Uh, you might notice as you zoom in that the quality may not be quite as good as the original Mevo, which had a 4K sensor for those digital zooms, but it's pretty close, and I think it uh, works nicely for the price point here. And if you don't want to use the zooms at all, you can just leave it at its native 1080p and all will be fine. Uh, there isn't much to look at from a hardware perspective. You do, of course, have the lens here on the front along with a light. You can configure whether or not that uh, light is active. Uh, you've got a battery indicator here on the back that is always on. Uh, battery life, they rate between four to six hours depending on what you're doing. And I would say that's probably an accurate estimate. Uh, so plan on about four hours to uh, be safe, but you can, of course, extend the battery life by plugging in a power source to the USB-C connector. So you could use a battery backup, for example, or just plug it into a wall. So you do have the option to extend out uh, that battery, but it has much better battery life than the original. And I think if you're just streaming, you'll get a little bit more than four hours uh, given you're not doing the added uh, power consuming task of recording. Uh, the SD card slot is right here. Uh, it looks like it records at about 20 megabits per second at 1080p. And you have the option to record in HEVC, which is a newer compression pro uh, codec that uh, will give you better image quality for the same bit rate. So I would use that mode uh, when you're getting things set up and we'll step through the app in a few minutes to get going with that. Now this new camera has more audio input options versus the old ones. Now of course you've got your internal microphones here on the top and we'll be listening to how those sound in a minute, but you also get a direct input here on the back. Uh, the older versions of the camera relied on a smartphone to bring in those external microphones and as you can imagine that layers in additional complexity. Uh, this one will support that smartphone connection as the old ones did, but I think for simplicity's sake, plugging in a microphone directly is really the way to go. One other note on networking, uh, they will be adding a power over ethernet adapter for the USB-C port very shortly. It's going to be a $100 add-on, but you'll be able to power the camera with a direct ethernet connection. And I know that might be of interest to folks who uh, want a more convenient way to power the camera for a long stream. On the bottom here, you've got a tripod mount. Uh, you can unscrew this uh, little tripod mount thing here and flip it around and get yourself something that will be compatible with a mic stand. So you can put it on a tripod or on a mic stand. You've got a lot of mounting options here built right in. So that is the overall hardware. Uh, let's take a look now and see how it works, and then we'll look at some image and audio samples too. All right, so we now have the camera on my local Wi-Fi along with my smartphone here running with the Mevo app. Uh, the app will run on Android and iOS. Uh, now, one thing to note here is that if you don't have a Wi-Fi connection available, you can connect the phone directly to the camera, and then you can use your phone's cellular connection to stream out. So whenever you can, try to use the local Wi-Fi you might have available, but there is the option to have the phone uh, be the transmitting uh, device for internet. So you do have some flexibility there. 
Uh, on the surface here, the app is pretty simple. You can see we've got a preview image here in the little thumbnail that I can move around. Uh, this also gives us an idea as to what kind of audio uh, inputs we're getting to the camera. Uh, and then what you can do is tap on the screen and actually zoom into different portions of it. So you can see that preview image changed when I tapped on the computers. I could maybe go over here to that uh, picture in the back there or maybe look around my shoulder here a little bit too. Uh, so you can move things around. And as you can see here, it's doing a nice camera move as I am adjusting the position of that zoom. And you can see what it looks like from the recording that we're making right now as well to get a feel for what kind of image quality you'll see when you're zoomed in. Uh, remember, you've got a 1080p sensor here that you're doing a digital zoom with. Uh, so it's not going to be the highest quality image, but I do think it will make things more interesting for your viewers. And there's a lot of automation that you can bring to bear on this as well. So if I click, for example, on this grid here and I point the camera at my face, let me just do that real quick, you can see now it's finding my face uh, as we're talking here. And if more people jump into the scene, it will add them to the mix. And you can just tap on each box that you want to switch to. And you can kind of use this as a little video switcher, even though you're just changing the position of the uh, the zoom as you're clicking around to different people. But it's pretty cool how it finds that uh, and gives you that flexibility to offer a more interesting stream than just a static shot. Uh, what I wanted to do real quick here is just show you an example of when you have multiple people in there. So this is a shot I took with my uh, daughter last night around the kitchen table and you can see it found her and me and then it also gave the option for a group shot too. So it's pretty smart about finding things to uh, try to make your stream a little bit more of an interesting thing again versus just a static shot. Additionally, you have some other options and if you click on the little A here, you'll see those things pop up. Uh, so it has uh, the option here to find faces. You can turn that off if you want. Uh, you also have something called live follow and what this will do is follow those people as they move around. So if the person happens to change their position or is just moving around a lot, it will actually move the camera to keep them in frame when they're zoomed in. And there's also an option here for what they call autopilot. And what this will do is continually switch up the image. And it's pretty smart about detecting who's talking too, which is really cool. And again, I just like this because you're not just putting out just a static flat image, you've got some dynamic movement going on between faces and stuff. And I think it might keep viewers on a little bit longer. And that's all pretty cool stuff. So before we jump further into the app, uh, I wanna take a quick break here and show you what this looks like in practice. So we're gonna do a little uh, video and audio sample here so you can see what happens when two people are interacting in front of the camera. Let's roll that clip. It's gotta have enough, enough ability to support the weight, right? Yeah. Okay. And then you have to um, put your hands on the bar and then you put your feet on the bar. You have to squat first and mm -hmm. then you put your feet on it. Yeah. And then, and then you start out slow and you, you go backwards like that. Oh, wow. And is then, it hard? To, is it hard to do that? Well, if, you ju if you're starting, it's really hard. Okay. You start out slow, and then you go faster. And then if you have like a pad or something underneath the bar, if you fall, it doesn't hurt, right? Yeah. Now this was shot under regular room lighting conditions just in my house here, along with the internal microphones on the camera. But you can, though, see the limitations of that digital zoom. You'll get artifacts and noise that will be very visible on larger displays. But if your intent is to try to attract viewers on Facebook or on mobile devices, those smaller video windows will make those things less pronounced. And I do think having a stream with a changing image is more likely to result on people sticking around than a static one. Uh, but you'll have to figure out what your audience is to determine whether or not this is the best choice for you. Now to start streaming, all you gotta do is hit the red button here and that will pull up the list of supported destinations. Uh, they support Facebook, YouTube, Periscope, and Twitter, Livestream, and LinkedIn. But you also have the option to manually push your video out to any service that supports RTMP, and just about all of them do. But you can only do one at a time. You'll see a multi-destination option here, but they're going to charge you 180 bucks for it. And if you don't want to spend that kind of money, uh, what you could do is go via RTMP to one of the many 
multi-destination streaming services out there like Restream.io that can do that for less. So you do have some choice here beyond what they're going to try to upsell you on. Uh, they also support Vimeo directly, uh, but that's going to cost you about 900 bucks a year. One other thing to note with the multi-destination, though, is that you do get the ability to overlay graphics onto your stream as it's going out. And if that's important to you, then maybe this might be worth considering. But for the most part, I think you'll be fine with uh, just going with a manual RTMP connection or direct to your favorite provider. Now, while you can only stream to one destination at a time, you can record to the SD card simultaneously. And what you'll get on the SD card is a full quality video. So even if your stream goes out at a lower bit rate due to bandwidth issues, the card's going to record the full quality video coming out of the camera. So you have that as a safe backup. Now, if you are paying the subscription fee and want to use the overlays, I'll show you what the interface looks like here. It's not spectacular. You've got some simple things that you can create here with text and just uh, drop those in. Uh, you can grab stuff out of your photo albums too and drop those images in. And now that I've set that up, you can see what it looks like on screen. Uh, not the most intuitive interface, and I'm just not crazy about the fact that this very basic overlay feature is something that you have to pay an ongoing subscription fee for. I get very upset about companies that release a really cool product and then keep certain features out of your reach unless you're willing to continually pay for them. And something like this overlay thing should just be part of the deal. But they do have some camera controls you can access through the app that are free. Uh, you can click on the little icon here to access those. Uh, so you have some filters that are preset. If you just want to do something like a sepia or go black and white, you have that ability there. Uh, you can also have some preset things like a stage or a backlit or an outdoor kind of configuration. But you can also set it up in custom mode. And what you can do here is uh, drop the camera into manual exposure mode. You have the ability to adjust the shutter speed when you do that. You have white balance settings and some color adjustments that you can make. And you can save those to the custom profile there. So you can just easily switch back and forth between your own settings and some of the presets here. Uh, you also have the ability to adjust audio. Uh, and you can adjust the output volume as a whole. And you can also adjust the mix of the Mevo and any external mics that you're bringing in uh, through the app. Now, I believe when you plug in an external microphone to the camera, it will disable the internal mic, but the app does let you mix the uh, app microphones with whatever the Mevo is pushing out. Now, one last feature to check out here on the camera, and that is its support for Nutex NDI standard. And this is what I'm most excited about with this camera, because this is the lowest cost a uh, self-contained NDI camera available at the moment. Uh, it's going to be a little rough around the edges right now, and we're going to come back to it in a future video once they flesh it out. But I like where they're going with this, and I want to show you how it might uh, get integrated into your workflow. Now, NDI is a standard that allows you to take video from your computer network and integrate it into your production workflow. So typically, if you wanted to have multiple video sources going into OBS, for example, you'd have to have a capture card for every camera you want to bring in or have a USB webcam or something plugged in independently. NDI allows you to grab video over the network and just drop it right in. And we're going to set that up real quick. So what you do uh, is you go into the camera settings, pull up the uh, NDI mode option here and switch it to on. Now when you do this, you can no longer record on the camera, uh, nor can you stream out through the camera but its video output is going to be available to any NDI device on the network. So let's get my laptop out here running OBS, and I'll show you how to do that integration. All right, so on OBS, I'm just going to go ahead and add a source. Now, I have an NDI source here as an option on my OBS because I installed the free plugin to get NDI compatibility. And I did a video on this topic if you want to learn more about it, but it's very easy. You just install the plugin with the installer, and it's there. Uh, so I'm going to click OK here, and when I go over to source name now, it will find the Mevo on the list of NDI sources on my network. And I'm just going to click on that and hit OK. I'm going to also enable hardware acceleration too, just for better performance. Now one thing you'll notice right out of the gate here, once it enables itself, 
is that the frame rate is really bad on this right now. And this is just at the time I'm recording this video. Uh, they did say that this is a feature they are working on and looking to be improving. Uh, so that's why we're not going to spend too much time on it now. But this does give you an idea as to once they get the uh, frame rate here running a little bit better, uh, you'll be able to get uh, your full Mevo capability here, complete with the camera follow stuff and all the autopilot uh, getting integrated perhaps with a game stream or something else that you might be doing. And it makes life a lot easier if you can't afford an operator to move the camera around, especially if you're someone who moves around a lot. And I think it can add a lot to your OBS stream. And again, we'll spend more time on this once this feature is fully fleshed out, but I am excited to see it in such a low cost camera. So stay tuned, more to come on this. So overall, I'm pleased with what Mevo has put together here with their new camera. I've been a fan of the original for a while now and often recommend it to friends who are on a limited budget, want something simple, but they do want a stream that's a little bit better than average. They don't like that static shot. They want some dynamic uh, views of the event that they're covering without complexity. These have often delivered that. And this one's better. It costs less. It's got more integrated features that are not integrated on the original, like the mic input and the longer life battery. And I think the NDI is going to be a killer feature of this product uh, once it is further fleshed out, because I know a lot of folks would love a small NDI camera that won't break the bank. And this one, uh, at the moment at least, is going to be the least expensive NDI camera out there. And I really hope they get that uh, feature really dialed in because I am really excited to see how that gets integrated into my own workflow here. So we're going to be back with the Mevo, especially when the NDI feature gets put together, but also when they get their multi-camera option working as well. So we'll be seeing more about this camera as we work our way through the year. Let me know if there's anything that I didn't cover that you'd like to see in one of those follow-up videos down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rajesh, Logic GR, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.